Consider your ways. Consider your ways. What's going on, family? I pray everybody's doing well. As we off top, give the most high y'all all the honor, the glory, and all praise and worship. I'm going to be saying this throughout this video. As the most high laid this heavy, heavy in my spirit. I want to go back to Haggai chapter 1. But I'm going to keep saying, consider your ways. When somebody tell you to consider, you better think hard about what you're getting ready to do. Think about it. How is your attitude? Mm. Teach Holy Spirit. How is your heart behind what you're doing? Are you procrastinating? Do you have that faithful servant's or are you lacking? Hmm. This is one of these Bible studies where it's going to make all of us examine ourselves. And if you're slacking, you can get it right. But before I get into the scriptures, I want to do a little, we can call it a um, little introduction. Because Haggai is known as one of the uh, minor prophets in the Bible. Um, you'll hear people say oftentimes, major minor which when you say minor they don't mean they was less you know and that they they weren't as powerful it just simply mean they didn't write that much they didn't write as much as the major prophets did so they are known as minor prophets but still was powerful when you think about this how many times in our life hmm, are we slacking Hmm. So I'm going to bag back a little bit and talk about Ezra before I, the book of Ezra, before I go a little further with this lesson, because I want to bring you up to why we at this point. So when you go back to the book of Ezra around, I think it's chapter six, the king of Persia, back then actually who was Cyrus. And then we see how Darius, also back then, they actually provided the material. They funded the project. What are we talking about, JT? The temple. The rebuilding of the temple. But Cyrus, we see how the most high. See, catch this. The most high would always use people you wouldn't think for his for his for his um work to be accomplished. Now we know that the Jews. Oftentimes, Hebrews, oftentimes, Judah, oftentimes, the chosen, oftentimes, was so disobedient. Mm. So many times. Fell into idolatry. Listening at other folks. Complaining. Excuses. The way was provided, allowing the Jews to return from Babylon to Jerusalem. Why? To rebuild a temple. The altar was already being repaired. Once again, they started, mm, teach Holy Spirit, and they stopped. How many times do we start something and stop because of? Well, that's what we got going on in our own life. Put this put this together, Holy Spirit. Mm. Procrastinating when it comes to the most high's business. So it stopped because of the Samaritans had something to do with that. So they stopped building the temple. 16 years. Mm. I don't know about y'all, but that's a long time. Stopped for 16 years. What if there was you waiting on your house to get built? Your house. Catch what I'm saying. And the most I had already told you to do something. But you say, I hear you, but I got to do my thing. I got to take care of my stuff first. I got to focus on my house. 
But what if you was getting a house built and he told you you had to wait 16 years before you could move in there? Mm. Can you imagine that? But they stopped building for 16 years. Long time. Let's get into the lesson, y'all. Thank y'all for listening to that introduction. That's going to bring us up to uh, Haggai chapter 1. And I'm going to say this before I read the scripture. I pray that I can get at least 10 pastors to hear this, 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 this Bible study. Because we know that our body is a temple. And we know that the Bible also say that the Most High does not dwell in buildings. But we also know that there, there are some good buildings still up. Not all buildings are bad. Not all pastors are bad. But the, the majority of the pastors I talk uh, talk to, their biggest goal is the building fund to get the church built. Well, let me ask y'all a question before we get started with these scriptures. Would the Most High bless you with a new building if you ain't even took care of the old building? Why am I saying that? Come to Dallas, Texas. And I know it's not just us. Ride around and see how many churches are raggly. Look like a crack house. Look like a trap house. And every year it gets worse and worse. And they won't hardly fix nothing. Why am I saying that? Because no house of Yah should look like that. Hmm. Well, JT, it don't matter. You know, it, it, that was back then. And let me tell you something. Do you think the temple that Solomon built was ugly, messed up, beat down, roof leaking, pots and pots on the some of the aisles in the church, like you see now? So many things that's easy to be fixed. But the ones who sit in there complain, not all of them, some actually trying to do stuff. Solomon built a beautiful temple. And how is it your house <laughs> look better than the church building you in? Now, don't get me wrong. There's some beautiful buildings up. There's some pretty buildings up. But what do you have on the inside? So I'm saying this to rightly divide this lesson. There was temples back then. Solomon's temple. Somebody say, where is that temple at now? What happened to it? When they build something from the most for the most high, back then especially, it was beautiful. Now, let's get into this lesson. Let me pull my scriptures up. This is the rebuilding of the temple. This is a call to build a house of the most high. Now, when, when we look at this lesson, keep in mind, consider your ways. Because even though this is rolled in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the Old Agreement, I want you to apply it to your life right now. Now, let's look at the attitude, and then let's look at how the Most High responds to the attitude. So, excuse me, if you have your Bibles, we're going to do the whole chapter of, of Haggai. And it says in verse 1, in the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatel, governor of who? Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying what? So we see in verse 1, see, when the Most High call you to do something, it's best to be obedient. So the Holy Spirit calls Haggai. He used, where we go again, he used the prophet. Let me send you to get my people back in order. He sends Haggai, the prophet, to deliver this message to the governor of Judah and to the high priest. Verse 2 says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Let's look at this. This people say the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Wait a minute. Who are you mm, to say that it's not, it's not time? Mm. This is the most highest temple. Who are you? Who give you the authority to say when something is supposed to be ready or built 
when it's not yours. They said it's not time. Consider your ways. Consider what you're thinking about. Hmm. Now, how many times in your life, let's put a pen right there, you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you that it is time, but you let somebody else distract you. You listen to somebody else's voice. You're even listening to yourself, it ain't time. Or the devil, it ain't time. And that's why so many of us, oh, teach Holy Spirit, we miss our blessings because we either listen to somebody else are hearing the wrong voice. Consider your ways. They said it wasn't time, but the most high didn't say that. Let's look at verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Hagar the prophet saying, here we go. Let's see what it says in verse 4. Is it time for you, uh-oh, oh ye to dwell in your sea led houses? <laughs> And this house lie waste. Oh, catch verse four. We're going to break this down, ain't we, Holy Spirit? You already broke it down. Teach Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. So here it is in verse four. When you look up this word, see it. They was pretty much living in luxury. Oh, but you done built your beautiful home. Hmm. Look at verse 4 again. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your seated houses? And this house lie waste. Notice it's a question mark. It's funny that you had time, oh, teach Holy Spirit, to work on your own stuff, but my business, the Holy Spirit business is put on, on hold. But you looking good. You got a good looking house, but look at my, look at my temple. Mm. It's jacked up. And then you just said that it's not time. Ooh, how many times do we put y'all's business last? Isn't it amazing how you find time to do everything else in life? You got to get your kids to this. You got to go to work. You want time for this. You do this. You do this. But when it's time to read the Bible, uh oh. Mm -mm. Well, maybe I'll read a few scriptures and go to sleep. Or when it's time to pray, uh, yeah, Lord, let me down to sleep. I pray the Lord's soul keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Got to get up in the morning. I know I'm hitting somebody. The most high wants. He wants our fellowship. He wants to hear from us. He wants us to take care of business the way he showed us. He don't want us complaining. He don't want us procrastinating. When he say, I want you to do this, I need you to do this, we got to do it. He don't want to hear the excuses. Look at what he said in verse 4 again. Oh, you got time. You got time to, to, to go get the wood and, 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 and lavish out your home, but mine is a waste. Let me fast forward. You preachers, y'all, y'all that do this, you got time to keep getting in the pulpit, begging and begging with the building fund, but where's the building? Mm -hmm. Well, JT, we've been taking our money for 15, going on 16 years. I know. And you still got regular dough knives, regular doughs, regular equipment, leaks everywhere. Foundation shifting. But you still saying we got to give God our best. But where's the best? Hmm. He wants our best. Let me move on to verse 5. We got to tie this in with nowadays. He says in verse 5, Now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, what I've been saying, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Mm. Think about what you're doing. Look at your attitude towards what you're doing. Look at how you're doing me. How many times on her do we say, do not grieve the Holy Spirit? Mm. You don't want to fall into the hands of the angry Holy Spirit. 
consider, think about it, what you're doing. Think about what you're doing and how you acting. You got your hairs looking good, but I gave you instructions on what to do. Mm. But you put mine on hold. But you still want me to bless you. Let's look at verse six. Ye have sown much, but look at this, and bring in little. You eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm, and he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with holes. Ooh. Mm. Wow. That's just that should hit all of us. In other words, you harvest and you, you harvest less than you plant. Mm. You never have enough to eat or drink. Your clothes don't keep you warm. And your money, <laughs> teach Holy Spirit. The wages that you are earning, it's just like you walking down the street with, with bags of money with holes in it. Mm. See, when I think about this, I, I remember all the years of, of, of struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet, trying to figure out what to do next. When he told me, do not worry about tomorrow, JT, for tomorrow, worry about itself. Each day got enough trouble of his own. Hmm. But they still found a way to take care of their business, hmm. but not their own. He said, yeah, you're getting by. You sown much, but you bringing in little. <laughs> you don't even have enough to drink. You're drinking, but you ain't got enough to drink. Well, we better catch this. This is the, the, the consequences of when we do not do his will. Let's move on to verse 7. Here you go again. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. How many times do he have to say this in there? Consider your ways. See, it's amazing when you when you think about Nehemiah. Oh, Nehemiah, when you y'all remember that old video we did, how they was willing to work. They didn't have no excuses. They was willing. This is why you have to be around the willing people who do not mind putting in that work. It's funny that I see so many churches in different parts of, of, of places that don't even have a food pantry. I always talk about let's do the most high's business. They just comfortable with going in the building. I'm not talking about everybody. When he said the poor will always be amongst us. Feed them, clothe them. You're only concerned about the people on the inside of the building. What have you done outside of your church building? I get a lot out of this lesson. In this lesson, they put Yah's business on hold. They put the temple on hold to do what they wanted to do and, and, and do their own thing. Make sure their houses was okay and looking good. The attitude wasn't right. Their heart wasn't right. Same thing we see going on nowadays. Look at verse 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. Mm. And I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, said the Lord. Mm. Okay, here we go. First of all, go go to the mountains. Go get Go gather up the wood for my temple. Do what I'm telling you to do. And see, back then, let's put a pen right there. Hey, it was hard labor. You had to go get your own wood. You didn't have all, you didn't have all these chopping wood machines and stuff like you see. It wasn't no Home Depot or, or no Lowe's. And they did this. But they was taking wood to, to, to um, take care of their own house. <laughs> Teach Holy Spirit. 
I know Mama JT is looking at this. I got to make you laugh, Mama JT, because you, you're going to know who I'm talking about when I say this at a particular church. I'm not going to name names, but there was a certain man hmm, who put so much money in the church to help get the church roof fixed. They took the money and put the roof on somebody else's house. Man, put in five, six, five or six thousand dollars to go toward the church building. But they said, let's take this money. Mm. Take care of our own house. Let me take this to my house. Let me, my house needs to be done first. I, I ain't worried about the church building. This is the same attitude. It ain't nothing new under the sun. <laughs> same attitude they had right here. Oh, but what? How do the most high have this? Let's move on to verse 9. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Hmm. Why? Did he blow upon it? Said the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house, this is the reason why. Look at what he said in verse 9. Because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man into his own house. <laughs> Look at these instructions. Yeah, go, go get the wood, go get everything. When you brought it home, I made it go away. I blew upon it. It's gone. Why did I do this? Because you were so much in a hurry to build your own houses while my temple is just jacked up. Mm, here we go again. Consider your ways. Let, let me ask you a question. Have the Most High, spiritually speaking, have the Most High ever blowed your stuff away because you was only focused on you? Or you had that I mentality. Was you up on your high horse? And then next thing you know, you was all the way on the ground. You hit rock bottom because of how you did the most high. You put your trust in your job. You was trying to serve two masters. You was loving your job and hating the Holy Spirit at the same time. Oh, see how the Most High respond back to their disobedience, their attitude. Consider your ways. Mm. It's always major consequences behind disobedience. But if he had to blow some of your stuff away, he, I know I, I'm guilty of, of, of being like this back in the day. I had to hit rock bottom. JT was doing what JT wanted to do and was bold with it. I was hearing myself and the devil. Holy Spirit told me to do something. I said, forget that. I hear what you're saying, Father, but this is my time. Hmm. How many of y'all been like that? It's okay to say amen. I'm talking about the old me. I'm going to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. This is me. I do what you tell me to do later on, Father. Now, here it is all these years later. That's why I got so many videos on there. Obedience. Verse 10. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Look at this, verse 10. This is why your harvest ain't, it ain't prospering. <laughs> This is why the dew don't fall on your harvest. Mm, I'm doing this. Because once again, you have disrespected me, not listened to me. You did your own will and not my will. Mm. You procrastinated when it came to my business. You are a procrastinator. You gave me all kind of excuses. Am I talking to somebody? How many of y'all procrastinating right now? JT, I know my calling, man. I should be doing this, but man, because of work, man, and then when I get home, I'm tired. 
man, I'm sleeping. Who blessed you with that job? Who's making sure that you you are still providing for your family, that you still got clothes on your back, food on the table, a roof over your head? Can he get some time from you? Woo, look at verse 11. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn, upon the new wine, upon the oil, upon that which the ground bring it forth, and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. Ooh-wee. That means all the hard work, the effort was for nothing. Teach Holy Spirit. All your hard work. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Look at what I, I, I'm causing this drought on the land, on the mountains, on the corn, on the new wine, on the oil, the ground that bring it forth. This is me. Your vineyards, your, your, your olive trees, your animals. Because you have, once again, went against me. You're more concerned about doing your thing. Oh, let's move on to verse 12. Something got to change, don't it? Maybe we'll see a change of heart coming in verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shethel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the raiment of the Israel, uh uh-oh, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet. As the Lord their God has sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Why does it always have to take the most high God to send somebody to remind us of what we're supposed to be doing? Hmm. This is what I love about the old covenant. He would always send the warnings through the prophets. A warning always came. And he wouldn't do nothing until he revealed it to the prophet. Friends, I'm going to wait on you. Hey, God, go deliver this message. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, so many prophets. He gave the word, and they had to stand bold. So here now in verse 12, Zerubbabel and Joshua, together with the others who had returned from, you know, exile in Babylonia, they obeyed the message from prophet Haggai. Now they start to show respect toward the Most High. That's why I, I, y'all hear me many times on her say that as long as your heart don't change, your actions are not going to change. Change your heart. You better have it. So you can keep you can keep trying to go against the Most High, but I'm I guarantee you you'll never win. You might as well surrender. You might as well do what He tell you to do, because the at the outcome of what you're doing on your own, it's not going to be good. That's why I love when the most high, I, I say, put me around people that's going to rebuke me, correct me, chastise me. This is what I love about Hagar. Hagar didn't make up no excuses. Hey, let me go send, let me go, I, Father, let me deliver this message. He spoke to the people. This is why you got to have those different people in your life that ain't going to agree with you when you wrong. But what do a lot of people do? They go around the ones who are doing the same thing they doing because ain't nobody going to rebuke nobody. This is why I'm I'm so hated on on here because I'm going to call out. I'm going to be that food inspector. Why? Because I have taken the plank out of my own eye so I can look into my brother and my sister. I, I'm going to rebuke. I'm going to spiritual discern you. And you should do the same on me. I have no problem with that. But I guarantee you I'm going to line up with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to convict me first. I'm not out, out here to, I know a lot of my messages, not my message, excuse me, Holy Spirit, your messages, that I'm just like, hey, God, I'm, hey, God, I'm just a messenger. I'm not the enforcer. But a lot of the messages that he give me, oh, I'm, I'm hated. Who are you? Just a messenger. That's what he told me to tell you. 
I don't care about you getting mad. I don't care about you crying. I don't care about you upset. I don't care if you leave the page the wrong way. Long as your blood ain't on my hands, I can. When when I have to give an account, I can say, you know what, Father, He already knows. I I, I didn't run. I, I did what you told me, even though I lost 30, 40 subscribers, thousand subscribers. I wasn't worried about how many subscribers I had. I was worried about somebody getting delivered and, and being saved because many have went away. Look at verse 13. Then spake Hagar, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message unto the people, said, I am with you, said the Lord. Isn't it amazing how the Most High chastises us because he loves us so much? He said, I, I, I would never leave you, never forsake you. I will be with you always, even until the end of time. But we leave him. Hmm. Hey, guys, being obedient in this message. Verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of uh, Zerubbabel, the son of Shetah, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the reign of Israel, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Change your heart. Now we see the respect. We see the obedience. What they should have been doing at first, which is another point to make. Stop hanging around people that's, that's telling you to do this and do that. You got to be in the most high to hear the most high. But now we see in verse 14, they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. It was time. He's been showing them all along. I, I told y'all, I'm the one to tell you when it's time and not time to do stuff. But you sit up and listen to the other folks. I got I got I got to chastise y'all, but I'm still here with you. And I want you to get back to what exactly I told you to do from the get go. Be on my, we be on my temple. That's what I love about Solomon. He wouldn't let David do it. Nope. David was a man of war. Hands was too bloody. But you know what, David? I got something better. I'm going to let your son Solomon do it. Verse 15, which is the last verse. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of, of Darius, the king. Look at that. Look at that. The work began on the twenty-fourth day of that same month. See, as I wrap this up, I'm, I'm done. May the most I add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his holy word. Doers. Read us, hear us, do us. When he tell you to do something, do it. That's 15 verses, the whole chapter of Haggai. Now, these are my closing remarks. I want to hit you with this because I want you to apply this to your life. It took Israel 40 years to, to do what they could have done in, we can say, probably 11 days or shorter however you want to look at it. 40 years to do something you could have had done in a quick amount of time. A 40-year journey in the wilderness. So this is what disobedience gets you. But you want to complain about it's taking too long. Oh, I'm hitting somebody. You complain about how long something's taking that you've been praying on. But here's the question I want to ask. How long have you been disobedient? And even if you're not being disobedient, it's got to happen on his time. When he says yes. How many times you hear me on her say, the most high give you no, not yet, and yes. But we only want to hear yes. But in this case, the disobedience hmm, will make you be in something longer than expected. Israel of 40 years. Some of us right now is wandering around and making our life harder because we're not taking care of the most high's business. Hmm. 
But I told you earlier, JT, man, I, you know, I got, I got so much going on in my life, man. I, I know what, I know what y'all is telling me to do, bro. I just, I just haven't found the right time to just, but you got time to do this. Mm. I always mess with a lot of Christians. I know on, when they be on Facebook, you got time to scroll down and read every comment, FaceTime, be on Facebook, but you ain't got time to put your face in the book. Teach Holy Spirit. But you want to post and post those scriptures to different people or text out scriptures. Do you even know what the scriptures mean? Can you explain them? Can you break them down? Do you know who said it? Do you know who it was said to? Or it just sound good to you? Making up all these excuses. I ain't got time to read his word. But you say you love them. Hmm. How do you when, how do you do all this when love is an action word? Hmm. You had time to go to the movie theater. You had time to go to the your son's basketball game. You had time to to take your daughter to cheerleader practice. You had time to do all this other stuff. You had time to go shopping. You had time to go do this and that. But when he say, where is my time? I ain't heard from you all year long. I ain't heard from you in six months. I ain't heard from you, but now you praying to me. You want to you wanna talk about seek ye first the kingdom. You're not even seeking me, but you want my kingdom blessings. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. You want a new church building, but you disrespecting the old one. You ain't even doing my will. You getting your dreams mixed up with the vision I gave you. You want a new house, but you're not even being faithful and, and, and showing me that you care about the one you in. You're not even being thankful for the house you got. You're complaining. You want a new car. But I ain't heard from you. Teach Holy Spirit. I want this, God. I want that, God. I want you to do this. I need you to bless me. I need, and then you got to nail the highlight. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Stop lying. I'm talking about to the ones. They know who they are. Some of us, when we say that, we really mean that. Because if he don't do nothing else for us, he have already done so much. But some, some of the people talking about, any way you bless me, I'll, I'll be satisfied. And then we, oh, I ain't satisfied with this. Mm. Oh, Father, you could have gave me a little more than that. Ooh. We are still being put in a hard place because of our actions. As I've been saying throughout this whole thing, consider your ways. How many times did our old people used to tell us, boy, think about something before you do it. Where your mind set at? Where your head at? Think about it before you do it. And even though half of them didn't think about what they were doing before they did it. But they showed meant well, didn't they? And I mean it out of love. I remember talking back one time, did you think about what you did? Is that why you got so many kids, babies out of way like? Did you consider your ways when you were shacking up with old girl? Did you consider your ways, preacher, when you was up there begging everybody? And you got a brand new car and you wouldn't even help the widows in the church? Did you consider your way? Let me leave that alone. Tomorrow is not promised as I close. We have to really be obedient to his will, his way. And when you acting up, not doing right, don't be mad when that certain person come your way that you know Finna come hit you hard. And that be the Holy Spirit speaking to them. Me and Vessel, y'all was just talking about this. It wasn't with my beautiful sister. Family members who don't want to hear you. They gon' they gonna always reject you because they know you right. But I don't want to hear you, Vessel. I don't want to hear you, Vessel, y'all. For team, but don't come to me with that mess. PP drawings don't I don't want to hear it. Don't come up to me with I know what I'm doing. God know my heart. Okay, do you know your heart? You ain't got to remind the most high that he know your heart. He created you. Do you know your jacked up heart? There's an old video my brother Rodney did on her call. How is your, how, your heart posture? So when he sends that, hey, guy, your way, <laughs> 
just like he said, sent Prophet Nathan David's way. There's somebody going to get sent your way, and I know you don't want to hear it. But it's for your own good. And if you don't want to say amen, you're probably the one that's going to continue to want to go against the Holy Spirit. So as I close, y'all remember my two C's I always talk about on her. Commitment and consistency. If you, you, if you don't commit, how you going to get started? And if you don't stay consistent, how you going to finish? Hmm. How many people on here starting and stopping? Consider your ways. Think about it. Look at your attitude. When the last time had the most I heard from you? Consider your ways. You want this and you want that, but you won't come out of homosexuality. Hmm. You want this and you want that, but you still want to be the lesbian over the praise team. Consider your ways. You want this and you want that, but you the jacked up, bootleg, called by Satan preacher. You want this and you want that, but you ain't been faithful at all. You talking about it's harvest time. It's time for me to, to pluck up what I planted, JT, and you ain't even planted nothing. How is he going to give the increase? You ain't even got started. What do you can... Now, let, let me rephrase this, because some people is consistent in mess, consistent in lying, consistent in cheating, consistent in getting drunk, consistent in hoeing around and getting high. Consistent in sin. So don't get mad when you praying. Oh, yeah, someone pray, JT. Oh, best believe it. So don't get mad when you keep praying and praying about the same thing. And the answer is still no. You're getting blessed by Satan, not the Holy Spirit. So my final word, once again, is consider your ways that's my time y'all have a wonderful wonderful blessed day shalom family consider your ways